There is a, a French saying, à chaque règle, il y a une exception. Today, you're going to see the exception. The warden talked about talent. Yes, there was talent. But it stopped at President Jemayel. The hope that what I'm going to say after what I heard today is I thank the Almighty for the Moroccan specificity. I was asked and I would like to thank uh, Professor Ahmed who asked me to talk on recommendation of the director but he didn't know what he was taking on and I hope he will still talk to me after today. Thank you to the CSI of whom I have heard a lot through my very good friend and my mentor Sir Siggy Stenberg with whom I work very, very closely. Having said that, I am not an academic, I am not an intellectual, I am Sidney Asso, as my teacher at university say, you can read, you can write, why don't you go and uh, sell uh, peanuts outside the uh, <laughs> swimming pool in Morocco. Well, I did not take his advice. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to this August assembly in the company of such esteemed academics, historian and politician. My intervention is neither an academic nor a political one, as I just said, it is a personal one. It is based on simple real life, life facts. In my case, history cannot, in my case, history cannot be erased. Although today we are witnessing history consult, constantly being remade in accordance with the rulers at the time. Lately, indeed, no later than last week, eminent Muslim academics have described better than I will true effectively accurately life for Jews in Morocco. Notice that they were all devout Muslims. Past, present and their hopes for the future. I am such an optimist as they are. Each one of us understands that current events, repeat of past eras where men and children can be eliminated are not new and they are a worry to all communities whether in North Africa or also here in Europe. This leads to many of us to question our future in Tunisia and in Morocco. I skipped Algeria as Jews disappeared after independence in situ through tacit expulsion and expropriation, which to some extent cost was made by the French government after made tergiversion. The question today with which all of us are confronted is to know if we should remain silent, which would look like collusion with the force of evil of if we should ability, have ability to preach reason to all those extremists from wherever they hail. We must not import in our midst the various world conflicts to which sooner or later we'll find a solution. However, I'm not an and easy as William Dalrymple on his description of the eradication of Christianity in the east from, in the, east from the Sudan to Turkey. I want to try to extirpate from misconception that so many people have on North African Jewry, Jewry, J-E-W-R-Y, uh, my pronunciation may think that I am trading here for some uh, 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 diamonds or something else. Uh, I was, until two years ago, an optimist for the Jews in Tunisia, who as in Morocco had benefited before and since independence until January, where insecurity prevailed. 
the annual pilgrimage to Jehovah this year, the oldest synagogue in the soil of Africa, went without a hitch, thanks to the security fences placed by the authority. And this is what I regret, that we have to have police to channel. The Jewish population now is about 2,000 remain in Tunisia very anxious. If in many countries in the world Judaism brought some additional values and qualities to every nation in which they resided, in North Africa the process has been radically different. Indeed, the Jews did not arrive after a different civilization settlement, they got ahead from it and happened to draw forth and blossom. The arrival of Islam in North Africa is going to help Jews to improve, improve their lives, spoiled under the Byzantine. The North African Jews possess a remarkable capacity for adaptation, such as Arabic, writing Arabic with Hebrew characters. If the Jews since died on until independence have helped to build North Africa, it is that neither time nor the prevailing situation have limited them. On the contrary, it is a vocation of North African Jews to keep their spirituality and bring their fraternal message to those who want to share it. I came here to explain Moroccan Judaism as I have lived it. When I was transferred to this country by a multi-international company, I was confronted by a description I did not recognize, and that by my own brother's Jews. I was ostracized, ostracized for I was a pest, P-E-S-T. P, standing for political immaturity. S, for standing for education, lack of it. S, for social inadequacy. And T, for trouble. <laughs> Whereas these four letters always meant for me, P for political maturity, E excellence in education by the result to the Alliance Israelite in Lebanon, in uh, Iraq and Morocco. Social responsibility by our charities and uh, various things. And the Torah learning, continuous learning. This situation awakened me to a subject entirely new to me, identity. Until then, I had no difficulty in assuming and living my identity. I was Jewish, British for sixth generation, Moroccan by birth, French my native language, education, graduation, and qualification. My English, as I said before, through the Church of England. <laughs> and uh, it hasn't, as I say, if my English is not understandable, is not a pupil, is not a master, is a pupil. Better than mine. <laughs> Pardon? Better than mine. <laughs> Humility. There is nothing like a Lebanese to bring you back. The charm of the Lebanese is unique, especially the Lebanese ladies. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I mentioned something to the to the president earlier, and uh, he didn't want to comment himself on this. On the, next, uh, the reason for this, it was a reputation of Moroccan Jews in Israel. They were the Black Panthers, so everything was similar. But why Black Panthers? They were Moroccan. In a country where they, for a generation, they were able to learn, to teach, to trade, and to live. The only period where we are, have suffered Jews, whether foreign Jews, Moroccan Jews, was the years of Vichy, from 1940 to the end of 42. And I will talk to that about it. When they were told to go to Israel, it was the land their land, they arrived there, and they were told, oh, you have to do this, you have to wash this, to which they were not prepared. They didn't, they were not prepared to, uh, they knew their right, 
but not with right comes uh, comes uh, liability, reliability, and they revolted. So I was benefiting of this when I realized that something had to be done. And until then, in my eyes, Muslims and Jewish elites maintained their millennia peaceful relation, be they communitarian, academical, professional, and commercial. And the French were aware of these tra traditional existing ties. Little, little did we realize that June 40 was soon upon us, with its serious and precedented difficulties. My father, being British, was immediately in turn with all the Brits and we, his children, expelled from our French lycée. And it was a glorious time for me. For four months, I didn't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> and from our French lycée, our education was taken over by the Alliance Israelite until the end of the war. And I give tribute to the teachers who had such an influx of children that they had three sessions a day. They didn't ask for more money, they didn't go on strike, and I am very, very grateful for that. The Vichy Authority installed several layers of ethnic grouping or nationality throughout North Africa. The French nationals, the neutral nationals, the aliens, the indigenous population, the Muslim, and the Jews. Each category had their own level of rationing and other regulations as prohibiting the use of facility as municipal, municipal swimming pool, municipal theater, and obviously school, etc. The real difficulty was in rationing, where the cream, the French civil servant and settlers, was reserved the best. Muslims and Jews were allowed the bare minimum. The latter resulted resorted to black market managed essentially by French civil servants. The Jews and Muslims were Anglophile, opposite to the armistice, and they played some role with the Muslims who wanted to use this situation to vie for independence. This was proven by the Sultan Mohammed V discussing with Roosevelt, who himself was in favor, and remembering the help the USA secured from Morocco in fighting for their own independence in 76, uh, 1776 from Britain. In Algeria, the Jews had the same relationship with the Muslim, and although they had acquired French nationality, they did not feel different as they were sharing the same job, the same way of life, until they were stripped of their nationality by their Vichy authority which created, in 1942-43, an invasion of Algerian Jews of Morocco, because they knew that they were healthier politically there than in Algeria. <coughs> this, it's civil servant to a large extent, the population, this was the situation until they achieved independence. This is due to the civil servant in place at the time was still Vichy oriented. Although we are 1956, we are still anti local, anti indigen. After the Allies landed, the composition of the civil service remained the same, with the exception of the heads of departments. They continued to exert vexation against the Jews, and now the Muslims suffered as well because of the battle for independence, of which many Jews got involved. The situation became worse in 48, when the creation of the State of Israel, exacerbated by the French trying to use this to stir up, stir up ill feeling between Jews and Muslims. This didn't happen. The Moroccan authority did not want the Jews to leave, as they were helping in the fight for independence, and the French tried everything to stop any immigration by refusing to issue passport. As I said before, 
there was the work of the Jewish residency, said, you go to Israel, you will not have to be subservient to the French, you'll be with your brothers. The only trouble, the brothers at Shinasi say, these are the Maghribis, the Mizrahis, these are our new slaves. And when his grace mentioned slave, this is what? A new form. You must understand, that I'm a pro-Israel, because Israel would not be here. No, I don't know what I would have become with the French fishing and so on, but I'm a great critic also. Growing up, I never felt any animosity from Muslims, on the contrary, we shared much. And my, with several of my Muslim peers, I continued my university education in France. During our stay in France, I did not feel stigmatized, only felt it in Morocco through the French civil servant. Algeria and Tunisia, as the remaining French civil servant, were the remnants of the 1930 wave of anti-Semitism in France as deployed by Charles Maurras in Céline writing and others. This talk should be entitled Moroccan Jewry is a shining example of Muslim, Muslim Jewish coexistence. It's not a dream, it's a concrete reality. The 1984 first class, first world congress of Moroccan Jews in Montreal was a living proof confirming that Moroccan Jews, wherever they live, have only one homeland, Morocco. Morocco can live without their Jews, but Morocco Jews cannot live without Morocco. Mod Moroccan Jews and Muslim are authentic through its antiquity relationship, its orthodoxy and personality, and Jews have always and today, today in the future, will always be an integral part of Morocco, life by its culture, its idiom, tradition, customer. And so on. I would like to repeat at this place that I'm neither a civil servant, neither a recipient of any stipend, decoration, or anything for Morocco. I'm speaking from my heart and nothing else. I'm sorry. You will understand our emotion, our pride to see as an opening statement of the new constitution, the recognition of the Hebraic roots as a component of the Moroccan identity. No other Arab country have done that. The three kings I knew and to whom I pledged allegiance, King Mohammed V, Hassan II, and Mohammed III, has always shown solicitude towards the Jews and the felicity, fidelity, as well as their effective attachment to their constant Moroccanity. No other Arab ruler, in spite of their ancestral history, such as in Iraq, Egypt, and unfortunately today Tunisia, Algeria, as like Mohammed VI, heir to a long line of glorious ancestry, uh, ancestry declared this religious, historical, and constitutional responsibility for the safeguard of his people, of their sacred rights and value of his Jewish subject. The Jewish community had to face a great migratory movement, mainly for economic reason. But as King Hassan used to say, for every Jew who leaves Morocco, Morocco gains an ambassador. Indeed, how many are we today? Well, a million. Two, a million. 5,000 living in Morocco, 800,000 living in Israel, and pro rata of the population, there's more pictures of King Mohammed V, King Hassan, and King Mohammed VI in Israel than in Morocco. Pro rata to the city. <laughs> Today, Moroccan Jewry is serene, calm in a troubled world. We realize this reality with confidence, as Moroccan exception is not an empty word. It is a culture entrenched in a profound 
religious sentiment, moderate and tolerant. It is a community conscious of its past, of its happy days and days of pain, as there were never was, nor will be, a golden era for any minority in the world, whoever it is or come from. We must remember that their lot was always better than their coalitionists in other parts of the world and mainly in Europe even today. It is a world community full of vitality and projects for the present and the future. It is an integral part of the Moroccan reality that Jews there enjoy full civic rights and, as His Grace say, the three words that I will always remember, share civic dignity. As I always say, take everything from a man, take everything, but leave one thing, his dignity. Because without his dignity, you have nothing. Don't count on him. I would like to close I say to close, and then I say in, in final, and then finally, you know, the usual thing. I would like to close by saying that Morocco can live without the Jews, as I say. It is unfortunate that Jews of Algerian origin could not only keep with their music and culinary memories through nostalgia, but are completely dissociated from Algerian life and, and politics, as we are in Morocco. We express ourselves for or against any policy. And the king, listen to us. I can assure you he listened to us. And I remember when King Hassan came to, uh, to London in 1984, 85, uh, and uh, I was asked, au pied levé, at the last minute, to say something on behalf of the Jewish community. And I didn't say much because I was very moved and uh, I couldn't peg. And I was known, I became known in England, in uh, Morocco. Don't touch this man, this is the one who cries in television. And it was very interesting. But what he said was very interesting. He said to the Muslim community of Morocco, listen to your brother's Jews. Wherever they are, they abide by the law of the country. And that was a revelation to the British Foreign Office, to the British community, the Jewish community, the chief rabbi at the time, Lord Jakubowicz, and who oh, I had difficulty to ask them to come because it's an Arab country. Jews in Arab country. And I thought I was in a civilized country ignorant of the policy and the politics and the reality of the day. Finally, as I say, in, Ottawa, in Tunisia, the authorities are faced with several political, economical and social problems. So the Jewish community is not of prime importance, although Mr. Marzouki, the president, and Mr. Hanouchi, president of the Enhada main political party, assured me personally of their concern and assured me that their solicitude toward their Jewish brethren. Finally, King Mohammed VI remained until today, and please may God, one of the few head of state who could ask the Jews and Arabs to recognize each other and to understand each other. And I had finished at this stage, but I could not, with royalty permission, to spare another two minutes. Uh, we continue to assume with as much efficiency our task in the field of education, technical teaching, social welfare, rabbinical teaching, justice and all others. Rabbis in Morocco are civil servants. They are necessary, finally, I do finally. We are a community, and as of us, the people of Abraham, Christian, Jew, uh, Muslims and Jews, with its fault and attributes, its splendor and its obligation, its hours of glory and its hours of distress, 
its golden age and its obscure century. I would like that we are crusaders for peace and illustration of our culture we will continue to expand throughout the world, true to their Jewish faith, faithful to the land of their birth and root, thankful to the land of our, uh, our, well, our uh, adoption, living proof that a pacific existence is possible between Jews and Arabs. Thank you.